Can I please ask everyone to rise for our Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for our invocation brought tonight by Councilman Willie Wood. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Councilman Gillespie? Here. Councilman Wood? Here. Councilman Argo? Here. Councilman Miller? Here. Councilman Ren? Here. Bowles? Here. Councilman Fink? Here. Having a quorum being established, I hereby call this Prattville City Council meeting to order. Ladies and gentlemen, since we are starting a new month, I call your attention to our character trait for the month of November, which is hospitality cheerfully sharing food, shelter, or conversation to benefit others. Members of the council, you should have received your city council meeting minutes from October the 19th, the work session on October the 25th, and our special session of the council on October the 26th, 2010. I hope you found those to be in good order, and if so, I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. moved by Councilman Renegar to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second by Councilman Bowles. Any discussion, changes, addition, deletions, comments about the minutes? All in favor of approving those minutes will signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed will say nay. Chair votes aye and those minutes will stand approved. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your opportunity to address the City Council on any issue. It does not have to be on tonight's agenda. All I ask that you do is you raise your hand and I will call on you. And at that time, would you please come forward? And before you begin your remarks, give us your name and your address so that we'll have a record of your attendance. Mr. Dozier. Thank you. My name is John Dozier. My address is 188 Ridgewood Road, Prattville. The information that I'm about to give is long overdue, but I like to give it. Mayor Byer, on behalf of the Committee of North Highland Memorial Community Center, I would like to thank you and the City of Prattville for allowing our committee to, quote, lean on you during the building of the center. You gave us encouragement in the planning stage years ago. Four members of the present council followed later in the process. Other city personnel boarded our train after it had started, including Mr. Williams of the street department. Along the way, we picked up Senator Wendell Mitchell, Representative Matt Gibson, and Commissioner Clyde Chambliss of Chambliss Engineering, Chairman of the Board of the Otago County Commission. Then hundreds of people in the private community and from distant places got aboard the train. Collectively, all of you share in the ownership of a well-constructed community center. What have been, what would have been the consequences if all of you had stood by and offered no assistance? Our committee would still be digging in hard red dirt at 779 Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. Instead, we have a vibrant community center which was designed and or configured primarily as a training facility and secondarily to accommodate civic and social functions. In addition to reunions, conferences, wedding parties, 
and other, uh, other benefits flow to the private community, such as one, one of the six training sections, GED training classes are taught under the direction of Mrs. Fank of the Family Support Center, servicing students across the city. Two, over 400 people are fed free Thanksgiving dinners by the Otago County Improvement Association. Three, nonprofit groups can be assured of limited meeting space for a small fee. Upon the death of a family member having no church affiliation, the facility is made available for functions as needed at a reduced rate. And five, we have a limited partnership with Elmore County Head Start Program, which has recently uh, relocated to Otagaville. In closing, we thank all of you for the support given us to meet seemingly insurmountable challenges encountered as we were building the facility, which is valued at greater than $450,000. Once again, thank you the Committee North Highland Memorial Community Center. Mr. Dozier, before you leave, any member of the council have any questions or comments for Mr. Dozier? Dr. Miller. I would like to um, tell you, Mr. Dozier, that you stand out in my mind in this community as a leader, a visionary, and a not going to take no for an answer kind of man. You have poured your heart and soul into this project. I've watched it unfold from early on. I've been in your facility. I've stopped by more than once or twice on a Saturday when you uh, are out there as your truck is frequently, tending to little things and big things. And you continue to nurture that project. And I think this is a better community because of everything that you've done in, in developing the North Highland Community Center. So I just want to say a big thank you and tell you how much I personally appreciate everything you have done. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for Mr. Dozier? Mr. Wood. Thank you, Mr. Chip. Uh, Mrs. Dozier, you know you to be complimented, as always, for what you've done, especially in the area of North Highland. I just, for the uh, audience's sake, a lot of people may not know the significance of North Highland, but for those of you who don't, if you ever get an opportunity, uh, contact Mr. Doge or go by the North Highland Center. There's a lot of significance uh, concerning the name of North Highland. And I uh, hope you, if you haven't done it, please do so. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Dozier, I would just like to echo the comments from Dr. Miller. Um, not a Saturday, well, not, a, not very few Saturdays go by. Uh, but I don't go by the community center and you're either out there tending to flower beds or cutting the grass or cleaning the marker or shining the windows. You, you, you're very kind to share uh, the, the credit and also uh, the, the thanks to all of those that have poured their hearts into that uh, community center, but no one has done more than you. And I know that that's hard for you to, to say because uh, that's the kind of man you are, but allow us to say it to you. Thank you very much for everything that you did and your leadership in making sure that the North Highland Community Center uh, came to be a reality and is a, is a shining beacon in the city. Um, and I'm so glad that people are taking advantage of that facility because it's a terrific facility and, uh, and a lot of the credit goes to you. So thank you, sir, for everything that you've done. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anyone else like to address the city council on any issue? Yes, ma'am. My name is Deborah Maliska. I live at 1319 Adel Street here in Prattville. I haven't been at the council meetings in a little while. I've had surgeries and stuff. Um, I want to begin by telling you something my mother has always told me. It's better if you tell the truth and not a lie. It's harder to tell the truth, but in the end, the truth wins out. With that, um, I'd like to know who on the council voted and assisted the mayor with the lawsuit that was filed against the city. Second, who was the attorney of record for that, for that lawsuit? 
I want someone to explain to me how all of you can stand up here, sit up here, shake hands with people every day. How are you? Good morning, good afternoon. But yet, you stab them in the back when you're doing it. This lawsuit has caused a lot of problems and a lot of questions. My mother lives here. She has for about 40 years. She's on a limited income. Her house is paid for. If you don't make these payments and we run out of money, what's gonna happen to her and her property? This is all she has. She gave up everything for it. And if she loses it, who's gonna take care of her? Who's gonna take care of her property? Who is going to make sure she's okay other than me? Because she put her faith in everybody here. She always does. My husband and I are looking at buying a house. But with this lawsuit and all it's done, how safe is it gonna be for me to buy a home here? <clears throat> what about the people who bought homes since the lawsuit was filed and didn't know anything about it? I don't understand why it's so hard for people in the public eye to say, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. We do it all day long, but nobody can be honest with the people of this city. And I'm ashamed and embarrassed how this went, how this happened. I want somebody to tell me why he felt it necessary to sue the citizens and not tell them about it. <coughs> Thank you. Anyone have any questions or comments for Ms. Maluska? Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Anyone else wish to address the city council on any issue? Mayor Byer, do you have a report? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have just several items this evening. First of all, I want to remind you that last Thursday we had the candy walk, and it was the uh, most successful and the most participation we've ever had. We collected the most food for AICC that had ever been collected from the candy walk. Of course, Halloween followed on the weekend, and we had no uh, significant issues to uh, police issues to discuss. Next Thursday uh, is Veterans Day, Thursday week. Of course, on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, we remember all of our veterans, uh, the American Legion Post 122 and Veterans of Foreign Wars Post 1349 will have a traditional ceremony at 11 o'clock in front of the courthouse. As always, uh, you are invited to uh, participate. There will be no garbage or trash collection on Thursday. We will collect the entire city on Friday. Garbage, household garbage, there will be no trash collection on Friday. Finally, I want to remind you about our honor flight reunion. Uh, we have done this. This will be our second annual honor flight reunion for all visit, uh, veterans and guardians of all five of our flights. That will be Sunday afternoon on uh, November the 14th at Doster Center from 2 to 4. All guardians and veterans are, are uh, invited to attend. So I know some of you on the council went uh, as guardians. Please, I hope you'll join us. And those of you who know veterans that went on one of our honor flights, if you would make sure that they uh, know. I know that letters went out and they should have gotten those. Unless there are any um, questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report this evening. Anyone have, have any questions or comments for the mayor? Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Gillespie, do you have a report? No, sir. Mr. Wood? No. Dr. Miller? Um, on behalf of the Finance Committee, we met last night uh, and uh, I think President Argo had a conflict, but we did uh, cover a lot of um, ground and I wanted to just give a, a brief uh, report on that. There are two main issues before us. One is to do a revision of the fiscal year 2011 budget. And a major uh, part of that is defining the target amount. I think everybody's aware that we've been uh, dealing with a figure that uh, is $1 million. And uh, basically that figure uh, came about because it was cited as the amount that we needed to uh, do as a minimum based on uh, the effort and, and, and such that would be required to bring the budget back before us to repeal it and then look to, to revise it. So 
it may be that we need to have a target that is more than that. So one of the tasks ahead of us is to actually define that target amount, so to speak, to set a goal. The other thing that we are looking at is the uh, areas of uh, possible reductions in terms of expenditures. And we are going to seek to put everything large and small that uh, has been uh, suggested or surfaced in the discussions and, and the review of the um, different areas uh, before us so that we can uh, say that we have looked at the complete picture and seen how all the pieces might fit together. And uh, some of those will be uh, making it to the final uh, budget changes and some of them won't. But I think that it's very important that we uh, as a finance committee and a council look at all areas and uh, think them through and, and see which ones are the ones that we want to um, uh, pursue. In, in like uh, fashion, we'll be looking at whether or not there are opportunities to uh, increase revenues. And again, some of those will uh, be things that we want to pursue and some won't be, but again, we need to look at all of them. When I talk about those sorts of things, I think the council fully, the finance committee and subsequently the council fully appreciates the importance of having all the information that we can get uh, in these different areas. And in that regard, we're going to definitely be uh, depending on the mayor and his staff to help us with the information that we need to define these different areas and what sorts of dollars they might represent as we deliberate uh, which ones would uh, make it to the final revised uh, budget. As far, part of the process, as we go about getting this information on these areas, the Finance Committee uh, subsequently uh, would make some recommendations to the council at large and then follow that up with a um, work session so that the entire council can uh, participate in, in making the decisions as we always do on what the final product should be. I want to say that I think the Finance Committee is, is going to commit to doing this in a timely fashion because I know uh, from the perspective of the mayor and the city staff, you're kind of in limbo, uh, if you will, and we need to move on for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is to get some uh, stability uh, and direction for you guys, both uh, you, Mayor Byard, and the uh, city staff. And in that regard, I, I think that the Finance Committee is going to look to um, formalize a timeline, if you will, so we all have kind of a roadmap before us on when we're going to move through this process and hopefully bring it to closure. Uh, there are rumors out there that this is going to be uh, done January, February, and I think Finance Committee is committing that it's not going to drag out nearly that long. We hope to have it completed. Uh, within the next, I would say, probably six weeks or so, give or take, uh, working around Thanksgiving holidays and such, and depending on how we get the information. The second broad area, aside from that one, which is revising the budget, is how we look at uh, the information and uh, flow of information that we're going to need as a finance committee and a council to do our business in the ongoing way in the future. And that gets into how you define what sorts of reports and information you need what format uh, and so on and so forth uh, in an ongoing way, how often we need information, what types of information, uh, the presentation, the data, uh, the comparisons from, you know, say this month to this time last year, the year to date to last year's year to date, all those sorts of things that are the basics of good fiscal management. And we're going to kind of establish some guidelines that are going to help us operationalize that so that everybody's kind of, again, on the same page with some concrete uh, definition, if you will, to how we go about moving forward in the future and uh, monitoring uh, the finances of the city. All of this in partnership with the mayor and the, the city staff. So I just wanted to bring you up to date on some of the thinking and let you know that there's been a lot of discussion amongst uh, myself, Councilman Argo, and Councilman Renegar as far as finance uh, committee work, and we are hopefully going to move forward with this in an expeditious way. And I think that's our commitment to, to not only the, the mayor and the city, but also to the, the community. And that's it. Thank you, Dr. Miller. Very good report. Mr. Renegar. Yes. Mr. Bowles. Mr. Fank. 
Members of the council, ladies and gentlemen, we have one item on our agenda this evening. It is ordinance number one, which is to amend ordinance book 2003, page 003, as amended by ordinance book 2003, page 005, the Prattville Environmental Tobacco Smoke Ordinance for Food and Beverage Establishments. Mr. Reniger, would you please introduce ordinance number one? Yes. <clears throat> Whereas the City Council of the City of Prattville adopted Ordinance Book 2003, page 003, on March 4th, 2003, establishing smoke, smoking and smoke-free food and beverage establishments. And whereas the Ordinance Book 2003, page 003, was amended by Ordinance Book 2003, page 005, on April the 15th, 2003, and whereas the City Council of the City of Prattville has determined that further amendments are necessary to clarify how separations between smoking and smoke-free establishments are maintained, and whereas the Council has determined that the proposed amendments will not negatively impact the health, safety, and welfare of Prattville citizens or lessen the provisions of Ordinance Book 2003, page 003, now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Prattville that Sections 2, Numbers 2, 7, and 8 of Ordinance Book 2003, page 003, adopted on March the 4th, 2003, as amended by Ordinance Book 2003, page 005, is hereby repealed and replaced as follows. Section 2, designated food and beverage establishments as smoke-free or smoking. Subparagraph so 2, for establishments designated as smoke-free, no smoking by any person, in parentheses, uh, employees or patrons, at any time will be allowed in any part of the enclosed area of the establishment except as detailed in Section 2, Numbers 7A and 7B. Subparagraph so 7, two or more food and beverage establishments operating under separate business license or two or more sections of a single food and beverage establishment shall not be directly connected by any interior means of access including but not limited to doorways, windows, service bars, or service windows unless each has the same smoking or smoke-free designation subject to the following exceptions. So paragraph 7A. Two or more food, beverage, uh, food and beverage establishments or sections of a single food and beverage establishment may be connected provided that each is served, is served by a separate heating, ventilation, and air conditioning HVAC system, which shall be designed to maintain a zero pressure balance in all doorways, windows, and other connections. Subparagraph so 7B, HVAC system serving split designations as described in Section 2. Number 7A shall be designed and certified by a professional engineer licensed in the state of Alabama and having experience in the design of HVA systems, system designs and statements certifying compliance with Section 2. Number 7A shall be submitted to the Prattville Fire Department. Subparagraph 8, a food and beverage establishment which is smoke-free but which has a smoking section within as permitted by Section 2 numbers 7A and 7B shall add additional language to require signage, see section 2, number 3, after smoking is prohibited throughout the facility at all times stating except in the named area, in matching letters and signage is required for exterior doors only. This ordinance shall become effective upon its passage and publication as required by law. Mr. Chair, I'll so move. Mr. Reniger has moved ordinance number one. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilman Fink. Members of the council, this is an ordinance, and by point of order, it will be held for two weeks until our meeting on November the 16th, unless there's a motion to suspend the rules. Call for suspension. I'm sorry? Call for suspension of the rules. Mr. Wood has moved for a suspension of the rules. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilman Fink. Members of the council, any discussion on the motion to suspend the rules on ordinance number one? All in favor of the motion to suspend the rules will signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed will say nay. Chair votes aye. The rules are suspended. The ordinance is now before us. Is there anything further on ordinance number one? 
Mr. Bowles. Will this affect Jose's? Because I know he's one of the main proprietors that has smoking and non-smoking in their building. The way I'm reading it, it shouldn't, but I'm just making sure it's not. I, I'm going to ask Mr. Reniger to address that since he was chair of the committee that looked into this. I, I, I have a, an opinion, but I feel like it needs to come from someone who has served on the committee. Councilman Bowes, if you'd like, I, I can ask Mr. Duke and uh, Mr. Johnson to come forward and explain the details to you. That's fine. That'd be great. But in my opinion, and the way I read it, it will not affect Jose Perez and his establishment. But let's hear from the experts. Mr. Duke, Chief Johnson. Councilman, this, this will not impact anybody that's already set up under the existing rules. Not, they won't be just grandfathered in. They, they, they'll be compliant with these, these changes. All right. All right. Mr. Gillespie. Thank you. Is this is basically helping us keep up with modern, modern technology? What we've, what we've done here is, is adjust the ordinance in such a way so that um, if someone can prevent, uh, present a design that meets the intent of the ordinance to provide separation, uh, that they can bring an alternative design to us. Okay. That, um, whereas the current ordinance is very specific in how that separation is to be established, we're, we're saying, like we do in many of our building codes, that if you can present an equal or better design then we'll be glad to look at that and allow you to implement it. So in a way, yes, technology may be available to allow for uh, an opening, a doorway, a direct connection between a smoking and, and non-smoking, and there not be uh, an exchange of, of air between the two spaces. Dr. Miller. So <clears throat> a smoke-free section under this amended ordinance will be no more prone to have smoke move over from the smoking section than it would be under the previous ordinance. That's correct. And, and they have to provide that design and have someone certify that that's the case. Yeah, where, let's just use Jose's as an example. Jose decided that they would separate the spaces and the intervening space is the kitchen. And all of those have separate HVAC systems. And that w that's the way they're keeping the smoke, smoking and the smoke-free areas separate. Uh, what we're saying is that there may be other al alternatives out there besides that, that method. Mm -hmm. And that we're allowing folks to present those if they can um, bring a design certification. Sure. Let me just add one thing to that. that the real point here that's critical is by having a professional engineer design it, it takes the burden of that design away from us because by law we cannot design these systems. Under the current state law, the professional engineers are the only thing that if you put the word design in, you are by state law working in their trade, which I cannot do. So when, if I have somebody present an existing building to me, you know, a, a new construction or major remodel is a lot easier to figure how to do this. But where you have an existing structure and they want to do this, in order for me to try to help them do it, that I'm stepping into the field of an architect or an engineer, which I can't legally do. So by amending the ordinance to do this, we're putting that burden of responsibility on that building owner which he contracts with who he wants to do this with, uh, he or she wants to hire, which is, of course, in this case, would be a professional engineer. And all that burden of design and falls to them, and I'm not spending their money when I tell them how to do it. And if I'm wrong, then they're stuck with whatever they've spent that I've told them. This puts that responsibility back on the uh, professional engineer. If it doesn't work properly, then it's between him and the owner, and, and they're not upset with me because I've told them to do something that doesn't work. But again, let me ask that question one more time because this is a real important issue. So a citizen in the smoke-free portion of Jose's is going to be 
no more or less protected than when they would be in this smoke-free section of an alternate system permitted under this revised ordinance. Right, no less protection. No less. Okay. Basically, we're, we're trying to allow some flexibility, but certainly stay within the, the intent yeah. the council had when they adopted the ordinance. Yeah, it was just a little bit different way to ask the question. You were consistent with your answer. I also want to apologize to um, Mr. Johnson because I know I had uh, talked about trying to give you some relief from one of the trickiest enforcement pieces, and that's actually the language that we specify in the signage as the requirement. And there is a, a, a lot of different... I guess rationale and logic in terms of uh, supporting that we go to a little bit simpler approach, perhaps using the universal sign for no smoke in the cigarette with the slash or the circle, whatever. So I'm, I guess, mentioning that to one apologize for not having that ready. Although you and I did discuss it by email, but it's something that I might bring back as just a little house uh, cleaning thing uh, on this um, ordinance uh, at some point in the future. Is that it, Dr. Miller? Yes, thank you. Mr. Gillespie. Well, I might ask uh, the good doctor then, would we want to hold this for two weeks and give you ample time to make an amendment uh, between now and then? No. I mean, I'll, I'll I, I, no. <laughs> Anything else from the council on ordinance number one? I will say, and this is not for either of you gentlemen, you can go ahead and, and take your seats. Um, I know that uh, Dr. Miller was, as I was, contacted by the American Cancer Society this afternoon wanting to make sure that uh, this ordinance did not weaken, weaken the original ordinance that we've had in place since 2003. Um, and uh, as Dr. Miller had done with the, uh, uh, with the young lady, and as I did, walked her through it, um, they were... Uh, they were understandably uh, concerned, but that they had uh, had their concerns addressed by letting them know that, uh, that what what I felt like and what Dr. Miller felt like, that this ordinance uh, was a way for other restaurants to actually comply without having to have the uh, the elaborate systems that we had to have in 2003 because the, the uh, technology was not available at that time. Uh, so... They uh, they ask if we would <laughs> if we would be amenable to sit down with them for them to discuss with us how we could strengthen our ordinance and of course uh, I agreed to do so but that was on my own dime not on the council's and uh, uh, we'll do that at a later date but uh, uh, I do think that this is a uh, that this is a very good uh, way for us to address other institutions and restaurants and recreational facilities in our city that wish to go smoke free uh, but, but without having to go through a, a tremendous retrofit of their existing facility uh, so I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to uh, go ahead and adopt this is there anything further on ordinance number one all in favor of ordinance number one will signify by saying aye, aye. all opposed will say nay chair votes aye ordinance number one is adopted mr. mayor do you have anything further Mr. Gillespie? No, sir. Mr. Wood? No. Dr. Miller? No. Mr. Renegar? Nope. Mr. Bowles? Uh, I, would like, yes, I would like to take this time to challenge the Finance Committee to come up with a three-year or five-year plan. I talked to several people today about this idea, but we need to, any financial person out there would tell you to have a five-year plan. I believe our city needs to be on a three-year plan to get out of this, not a five-year plan. A million dollars will not get us out of here in three years. A million dollars will ensure us that we're going to have to be on a 10-year plan. So I would like to challenge y'all to come up with two to two and a half million dollars this year and for the next three years out of this budget. So good luck, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bowles. Mr. Fank. Members of the council, ladies and gentlemen, I will let you know that uh, as chair of the Finance Committee, uh, I will let you know that Mr. Renegar and Dr. Miller and I have, uh, uh, we've accepted that challenge and we're already moving ahead of that. So, uh, but that was very good catch on your part. Thank you for uh, letting us know that we need to do that because we, we felt like we were on the right track and we feel like that we are. Ladies and gentlemen, I will let you know that our next city council meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, November 16, 2010 at 6 p.m. And we hope that y'all will come back and be uh, with us at that time. Uh, also, 
Uh, if you haven't voted, you still have uh, 24 minutes to go vote. So please go do that and uh, hope everyone's candidate wins tonight. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So All in favor say aye. Aye. aye.